Okay, um, Algebra 1, Module 1, Lesson 24 and 25. We're going to wrap up um, with some problem-solving skills and using our ability to set up equations, systems of equations, using uh, and solving using substitution or elimination. And so uh, what we have before us today, we have been introduced to Lesson 24. In fact, um, if you recall the last time... Uh, uh, we met, we were going over uh, a few of these problems, and today we're going to round out Lesson 24 and also move into Lesson 25. Um, and the idea is taking something in English and converting to something in algebra uh, so that we can find the solution. Setting up equations, in other words. In some cases, they'll just be uh, regular equations with one variable. In other cases, there'll be a system of equations in two variables. And so we start with lesson 24, applications of systems of equations and inequalities. And again, the outcomes are you're, you're going to uh, investigate a problem uh, that can be solved by reasoning uh, quantitatively and by creating equations in one variable. Um, we hope to um, also compare numerical approach to uh, to the algebraic approach, um, you know, creating that that connection between um, straight numbers and algebra and how we problem solve. All right. In the opening exercise uh, in Lesson 24, you were tasked with trying to uh, find uh, the weights um, of a topic. And, and they gave you some sentences in which, uh, as you can see here in the solution, you're really being asked to identify what X might be and what Y might be. So, for instance, in that first example, you have to identify and you have to list and be able to say what your two variables might be. In this case, X was going to be the number of pounds uh, Twitter D weighs and Y was going to be the number of pounds that Twitter dumb weighs. And you could see that their equations uh, end up being um, just a conversion from English to algebra. Sum of your weight and twice mine is 361. And so um, you could see X plus two Y is equal to 361. And then the second sentence, the sum of your weight and twice mine is 362. And so that's where they get the Y plus 2X is equal to 362. And again, this is a problem that was, that was discussed in your original video. And this is, um, again, what we're going to be doing today. Also in that video that you saw last week, you saw this problem. And again, you're just converting from what you read um, in to some sort of algebra. So you're reading and you're taking English and you're really trying to take it and convert it to algebra. And as you saw last week, they created a system of equations to whereby you can, uh, first of all, note that D in this case was the number of dimes and Q was the number of quarters. And you're creating um, you're outlining the, the two conversions, one sentence from English to an equation, D plus Q is equal to 20. And the second equation, uh, 0.10D plus 0.25Q equal 410. And then using substitution or elimination to solve for the number of dimes and quarters you have. And so that's what we're going to do here. And I've asked you to look at number one and number two. So just remember, View, you were asked to look at these two problems right here, and we're not going to solve them uh, on this video. You're going to be tasked to do that, and then we'll go over it in class, but we are going to set them up. And so what you should have come up with in reading number one, again, converting from English to algebra. This is sort of straightforward. And find two numbers, number one, such that the sum, and so keywords here are really important, the sum of the first and the third, uh, or rather three times the second, is five. And so the first thing I notice is I have to understand that the word sum means addition and the first and three times a second equals five. And so my first equation is going to be X plus three times the second is equal to five. And so you have to be able to see that connection. Sum represents addition. The first <clears throat> is represented by X. X is equal to your first number. And three times a second, Y is your second number. And then in the second part of the problem, 
the sum of the second now, which is y, and two times the first, which is the x. And so here we go, y plus two times, two times the second plus two times the second is equal to eight. So it turns out here's your setup and then we choose to either use elimination or substitution um, to solve for x and y. So we'll go over that in class as far as the actual solution. This is your setup. Okay, number two. Number two, again, you're given the task of reading the problem and then converting, um, defining your variables and going from there. A chemist has two solutions. So right away you have two things, an X and a Y, or you could, you could use different letters. A 50% methane solution and an 80% methane solution. Those are your two, your two variables, uh, X and Y. He wants 100 milliliters of a 70% methane solution. How many milliliters of each solution does he need to mix? Okay. And so the first thing you notice is that X will define as my 50% solution and Y will be my 80% solution. Okay, and you need two equations, two unknowns, X and Y, two variables, we need two equations. So the first equation is gonna be just basically the total. Um, we know that X and Y is gonna equal 100 milliliters. So we know that X plus Y, whatever that is, is gonna equal 100. And the second equation is gonna deal with the percentages. And so we know that we want 50% of the X, 80% of the Y to get 70% of that mix of the uh, total 100 milliliters that we have. And so that second equation is going to look like this. And so here are two equations. We have two unknowns. And from this point, then you can go ahead and solve using substitution or elimination. And again, we'll solve this in class, but there's your setup. Okay, just a couple more. All right, so lesson 25, we're gonna combine with this. And again, it says problem solving using algebra. Students will use systems of equations or inequalities to solve contextual problems and interpret solutions within a particular context. And again, this is, this is similar to what we just saw. And so we're going to look at um, a couple of these, and then we're going to do the rest for practice. All right, number one, starting with number one, solve the following. You know, it's always important to read the problem first and really maybe read it a couple times. Solve the following problem first using a tape diagram. We are not going to use a tape diagram. So we're just going to use algebra and setting up equations. So that's, I want to make that clear here in this, in this section. In a school choir, one half of the members were girls. At the end of the year, three boys left the choir and the ratio of the boys to girls became three to four. How many boys remained in the choir? Now, in this particular one, since we have an equal amount of boys and girls, we're just going to choose one variable. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say that B is equal to the number of boys and in fact, B is also going to be equal to the number of girls. And the reason why I can do that is because they're equal in the choir. They were half, half of the choir members are girls and the other half are boys. So they're equal. At the end of the year, however, three boys left the choir and the ratio of the boys to girls became three to four. And that's where we really get into interpreting what we have. So at the end of the year, so boys, B minus three on top, we'll say that, that B minus three represents now the boys because three boys left. And below is the, or the, the B that represents the girls that are still there. That ratio at the end of the year became from boys to girls. So it's important for order here, became three to four. It's really important to interpret that ratio. Three to four 
also means three to the four is a fraction. And so now we have one equation, a proportion, and one variable, and we just cross multiply. And so this is where I'm gonna stop and I'll let you finish that and solve for B to find the number of boys and girls. Okay, number two. Number two reads, 16 years from now, Pia's age will be twice her age 12 years ago. It can be confusing. <coughs> so let's set, <coughs> excuse me. So let's set Pia's age um, to be P is equal to her age now. It's really important to see P, her age, age now. Now, if we set that, it says 16 years from now. P is age will be twice, um, twice her age 12 years ago. And so 16 years from now, as we say, P plus 16. And that's 16 years from now. That's what that means. Is equal to P is age 16 years from now will be, in other words, equal to twice her age 12 years ago. Okay, so twice her age 12 years ago. So again, this is not a system of equations. It's more just converting. Starting from left to right, 16 years from now, P plus 16. P is age will be twice, will be equals twice, there's that two, times the quantity, her age now, minus 12, 12 years ago. From this point, solve for P. All right, and we'll solve this in class as well. So now let's go to the last one. Now, these are interesting problems. They're called consecutive integer problems. And um, they're, they may seem confusing, but as you get into these, these are pretty simple. It says, find three consecutive integers such that their sum is 51. Well, let's first start by identifying variable-wise what we mean by consecutive integer. Integers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, et cetera. And so let's start by, since we don't know what these integers are, let's set what x is equal to. I'm going to use the variable x. X is going to be equal to the first integer. And then X plus 1 is equal to the second. And X plus 2 is equal to the third. Three consecutive integers. X, X plus 1, X plus 2. It says their sum is equal to 51. Straightforward, simple enough. This is not a system of equations. This is a straight... Um, conversion from English to algebra in one equation. It all begins, though, with setting up what x is equal to. So, as we begin to think about sum, well, that's x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. And then that's going to be equal to 51. Find three consecutive integers such that their sum is 51. Here's your equation. Solve and then plug back in for x, x plus 1, and x plus 2 to find your three consecutive integers. Okay, I'm going to let you uh, finish that out. And in class, we are going to go through and work some more problem-solving activities like this. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, talk to you soon. All right, guys.